Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be friend zone, why your romance isn't progressing. Well, today I thought I'd go with green for the background. Somebody actually suggested last week, hey, coach, it'd be really cool if you had green. So we got the green lantern effect today on the Great Wall of Vagina. So with that said, I really like this email because this particular guy, he's new in my work. He's only been around. He's just found me a week ago, just got into the book, but he's making a lot of mistakes. So it's some great cannon fodder for breaking his balls. But what you can tell and what I want you to listen to as I go through his email is like, what is this guy's mindset? How does he perceive himself? Does he sound like a guy that thinks he's worthy? Or does he sound like a guy who's just expecting to get rejected and he's frustrated and he's pissed off because he's fearful? Because this woman, obviously, she dug him. She was into him. But the more he texted her and interacted with her and tried to set dates, he's thinking, how do we get her back to the way she was the first couple times we went out? But the problem is, it's like the, the frustration and his impatience is completely turning her off. So with that said, I got a quote and then I want to go through his email. And the quote says, when a man is fearful and his mindset and self-perception suck, he will communicate with his words, actions, and the tone of his voice that he's not worthy and has no emotional self-control. When a man has no emotional self-control, this scares women away and ruins attraction because they no longer feel safe and comfortable around him. The superior mindset is one of non-attachment and abundance that even if the woman you want doesn't want you, then you're grateful for the opportunity to meet her, excited about the future, and eventually finding a woman who reciprocates interest and effort. A man only needs to show up and extend his invitation for a romantic adventure and be okay with it being accepted or rejected. Displaying confidence is the act of risk-taking despite the potential for rejection and failure. You won't get most women that you go after, but eventually you will get the right ones with enough time, effort, and action. Provided you don't do what this guy did, which is basically every time he interacts with her, he's talking her out of liking him. But I'm sure pretty much most guys watching this and most women watching this can kind of relate and have either done this themselves or if you're a woman you've had a guy that has behaved exactly the same way and so ladies feel free to comment in the youtube comments below or instagram or on facebook if you're watching it on one of those platforms and share some of your experiences because it can be helpful from a woman's perspective, because you know, obviously the comments are usually pretty active on my videos to help guys see, okay, now I understand how it makes them feel when I behave this way. So with that said, let's go through his email. He says, hey, Corey, she's 33 and I'm 39. I just came across your stuff about a week ago on YouTube and also bought your book, How to Be a 3% Man, and still listening to it. I'll try to keep this short and sweet. And if you're new, and you haven't, he's talking about 3% Man, this book here. You can read it for free at understandingrelationships.com. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. There's a little sign up box in the upper right hand corner if you're on a desktop or a laptop. And if you're on a mobile device, it'll be the first thing that you see. Put your name and your email in there and hit submit, and it will take you right to the members area where you can start reading. You can also read my second book, Mastering Yourself, which is a book all about self reliance. Both for free. And then once you see how well it works, then go and buy a copy. But this guy obviously went and bought the audiobook right away, which I always appreciate that. So with that said, let's get into the meat. The meat of the issue here. So he says, part one. I've known her for about two months. We started hanging out a few times a week off the bat. All was well. She would text me to make plans. I would do the same. She was very available. So obviously, he started out with a woman who had, at least initially, a high attraction level. She tells me that she likes me and the things that we do. So obviously, they're having some fun on the dates. 
It wasn't a total drag. The conversation flowed. He said a lot of flirting and was able to kiss her once. Now, what does that sentence say? I was able to kiss her once. Does that sound like a guy who is used to women kissing him and wanting to kiss him? Or is that a guy who's kind of treating her a little bit like a celebrity and that, like this is a big deal? I was able to kiss her. I got the first face. Holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. Remember, he's, what do you say? He's 39 years old. But hey, better late than never. I didn't master this stuff till I was in my early 30s. So I got people in their 60s or 70s that follow me that are still trying to figure this shit out. So teach his own. Your path is your path. You should not feel ashamed or worry about people who are judgmental in any way, shape, or form. The goal is just try to get a little better each and every day. So he says, after that, as weird as it sounds, she'll let me kiss her, just won't kiss me back. That sounds to me like you are kissing a woman when she's not ready to be kissed. You're thinking just because you plant your lips on hers that she's supposed to stick her tongue down your throat and suck yours out of your mouth. So obviously you definitely need to read 3% Man because I go through the seduction process and when a woman is ready to be kissed. And the things you're going to look for, is she playing with her hair? Is she leaning in close? Is her knee bumping yours? Is she close to you? Is she looking at your lips? I mean, I go into more extensive detail in the book, obviously. But this tells me, again, he's only been following me for a week, so I can't break his balls too much about that. But the point being is he has no sensory cue. He has no idea when she's ready for it and when she's not. And obviously reading the book will fill in those gaps for you. So he says a few weeks of that. Then she comes over one weekend and decides to spend the night. I regret not going in hard. Well, again, seduction is a process. It's all about making her feel safe and comfortable. And when a woman feels safe and comfortable and she's already attracted to you and you're not doing things out of sequence, she slowly lets go, slowly submits to you and lets you have your way with her. But it's a process. Two steps forward, one step back. And I explain that in depth in the book. We spoke about how we felt. So now he's talking about feelings. The reality is a woman really doesn't give a damn how much you like her, what you feel about her. The only thing she really cares about is how she feels about you. But when you watch typical movies and TV shows, you usually see that the, the guy is just supposed to bleh, vomit up all his feelings and, oh, I'm so flattered. This is so wonderful. There's a time and a place for it. Obviously, he's thinking he's got to reveal how he feels because that's going to make her like him more. And it just it's, that doesn't have that effect. It's everything. It's the dating process. It's the mystery. Not knowing when or if you're going to call again or when... You're going to see her again or she's going to see you if you like her or not. Remember, it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. It's like when you go to watch a movie, you don't want to hear five minutes before you walk in the movie through your best friend go, oh, yeah, the dude dies in the end, man. This is a total bummer of a movie. You don't want to hear that. You want to, don't want to know the ending. You want some anticipation. You want to enjoy the ride. We all tend to appreciate things when we have to work for them. And when they take time, when something's easy and totally given to us, we tend to take it for granted. She basically said she really likes me, being with me, etc., and getting to know me. She made it clear she is available emotionally and not closing that door. So in his mind, you could tell he's all focused on the relationship and locking her down. What well, time's going to expire on this? He's thinking, I got to make this happen. Some other dude's going to be coming around and going to take her away from me. We spoon. I feel up her ass and tits, but I don't pursue more. I know I fucked up there. Well, the reality is you don't, doesn't sound like you really know whether she's open to it or not. And that's why you kind of, oops, I just gently grazed her nipple and see what she thinks about that. And you just slowly move your hands around and see how she does with it. If she stops you, doesn't mean that's it. You don't try anymore. 
just means slow your fucking roll, slow down. Again, I go into extensive detail on that in the book. And the reality is all these videos are assuming that you know the basics in the book. So I'm not going to go through and regurgitate every, every single thing in the book because it would take too long. The video would be longer and forever. The idea is to help point out where this guy is going wrong and maybe some things he's doing right, which is not a lot of things he's really doing right here because you want to avoid doing these. The idea is to correctly implement what's in the book. And it's helpful to learn from somebody who's fucking it up. That way you learn from their mistakes and you don't make the same ones. So he says, part two, she changes behavior the following day for a good two and a half weeks and I don't even see her during this time. Sounds pretty frustrated and pissed off. It's not going the way he wants. Now he's getting impatient. Remember, I talk about James Bond a lot. How would James Bond be? This, this happens all the time. He always gets what he wants. He thinks from the end. He's in no rush. It's like Rumi said, slowly, slowly and steady like the river that never runs stale. No hurry, no rush. You're going to get there. So what's the rush? When you're impatient, you're communicating that this never happens to you and you're frustrated and it's going to turn out in failure like all the other women in the past has. And women are going to feel that. Obviously, she's feeling it. That's why she's backing off. I felt her being distant, wasn't making plans, etc. I asked no questions until I was able to see her. He was like, I'm going to confront her. What's going on? Because he could tell she was really into him at first. And now she's like, eh. This woman, at th she's 33 now. At 33 years old, she's been out with enough guys and talked to enough guys that she knows how this always ends. And the thing that he has going for him is obviously she was really into him at first, really attracted. Remember, I could talk about in 3% Man, Mother Nature has already handled sexual attraction. So you can make more mistakes the higher her interest starts out. And the lower the interest is, the fewer mistakes you can make before she's like, you're out of here, dude. Finally, we saw each other. We spoke. I asked if everything was cool. In other words, where do I stand with you? If she was okay because I noticed that she's been distant. Well, the reason she's distant is because you, you're turning her off. You don't. It's obvious that you don't understand attraction and the process of seduction and what makes a woman attracted to you and what turns her off. But that's why you read the book. And the good news is you're here and you're learning. She says she hasn't been herself lately. <laughs> that sounds totally legit. And she's just been out of her element. The reality is that she doesn't want to hurt your feelings. She doesn't want to, she's not going to come right out and say, well, you're kind of pushy and you're kind of impatient. And it's obvious you don't really know what you're doing with a woman you like. She's not going to say those things. She doesn't want to hurt your feelings because she doesn't think you can handle it. Or she doesn't want to cause a big fucking scene because, again, she's been in this position before. She would hug me while we walked away and said it wasn't anything I did or said. That would... Um... <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? That would be an embellishment. That would be a little misdirection, maybe. In other words, what she's really saying, if you understand the language of women, she's saying, dude, it was pretty much everything you did and said. She doesn't want to hurt your feelings because, you know, deep down, they don't think you can handle it. And they don't want any fucking drama anyways. But she's glad I didn't jump to conclusions because it can be misinterpreted. Come on, man. Oh, by the way, you can get these at teespring.com forward slash Coach Corey Wayne. Got a store in there. I got 3% Club. We got no drama allowed. But when I was reading this email, at first I was thinking, this is pretty fucking funny. It wasn't anything I did or said. But she's glad I didn't jump to conclusions because it can be misinterpreted. During this conversation, I make it clear, as I've made before, damn it, woman, do what I want. I enjoy seeing her and spending time with her. Then she asked me if I would change if she only offered me friendship. Oh. So she's thinking, this guy doesn't get it. He's kind of clueless. So let me just stick him in friend zone and I won't have to deal with any drama. 
I said, hell yeah, I'd change. She asked me in what way. I replied, well, I'm not going to be trying to see you, inviting you on dates, being attentive, etc. So now I assume I was placed in friend zone. Bing, you're learning. I take her home. Things were awkward. And I was like, fuck this. I would have just calmly said, nah, I'm not really interested in friend. You're a cool girl. I don't like hanging out with you, but I'm not interested in friend zone. I'm not interested in being friends only, I should say. Part three, I discover you, Corey. Ding, ding. So boom, I don't even text her anymore. The following day, she texts me in the evening. I just let it sit a few hours and simply said, hi back to her. What I would have said is, hey, great to hear from you. Why don't you grab a bottle of wine? Come on over. Or why don't you grab a six pack of beer and come on over? Why don't you grab some chicken breasts and come on over? We'll make stir fry or we'll cook out on the barbecue. She asked, how was my day? I said, fine, thank you. She said, oh, okay, that was that. Now I'm adding a little bit of voice inflection because that's basically how she's going to take it. She can tell he's buttered, he's upset, he's mad. Remember, as I talked about in the quote, you could take it or leave it. Oh, great, cool. Eh, no, I'm not interested in friend zone, but hey, call me if you change your mind. The good news is he said I wasn't interested. he wasn't interested in friendship. The bottom line is she reached out, so at least at that moment in time, there was still some interest there. And if, as the book says, if she's reaching out, you should assume she wants to see you. The day after that, she texted me again in the evening. She says hi. And I said, hi. Then she just comes out and says, why am I so serious and only responding very short? <laughs> because you're, he's pissed off. Notice what he says next. It kind of pissed me off because what the fuck? So you're not going to get anywhere by being butthurt and upset with her. Remember, it's like, pff, always assume it's fun, it's playful, it's not a big deal. She tried to put you in friend zone. You said no thanks. She reached out a couple, you know, the next day. You should have just invited her over. But instead, you're like, screw you. She hasn't been like she used to be. That's because her attraction level has dropped. There is a chapter in the book, 3% Man. It's all in the numbers. That's the one that has the attraction table, if you will. It's not so much a table, but it's like a couple of pages that just shows you her attraction level the kinds of things she's going to do the bottom line is her attraction is going down instead of going up so i told her well what am i supposed to do you don't want to hang out or have time for me you're expressing butthurt you're expressing you have no emotional self-control you're upset that's not going to make her feel self uncomfortable these, these are the these are the kinds of things the stalker the abusive boyfriend the lunatic says and that's why it scares them and it turns you know turns women off i'm not going to sit here waiting for you to decide when to hang out then she says what do you mean i already explained it to you so i said look i hang out with you because i like you and enjoy your company i'm here sharing parts of my life with you for you to be a part of it and if that's not what you want then there's nothing for us to do she says, I never said I didn't want to see you, blah, blah, blah. So I said, fine, I'll make it easy for you. How about you just let me know when you want to see me and that's it. There won't be any confusions. She said, okay. I told her I was happy where we were before, hanging out, etc., and on a good path for things to happen. A relationship, obviously. She's even telling them that, why are you so serious? Love is playful and fun, doesn't get offended, doesn't get buttered, take it or leave it. You want to be with somebody who really wants to be with you. And if somebody doesn't want to be with you, that's eh, okay. Maybe they'll change their mind in a few weeks or a month or so or never. It doesn't matter. The right girl is going to be excited and happy to have you. And the wrong one, they won't. Don't take it fucking personally. You want somebody who's going to mutually choose you. And this girl's trying, but you keep, you keep blowing it up every time she interacts with you. She said she wanted to do the same. Then she said, okay, let's do it then. So I agreed and here I am. My question is, how much time do I give her to shape up her ship out? 
Uh, well, you got three freckles past a hair, so add four freckles past a hair, and then psh. It's like your job as a man in the courtship is to simply create an opportunity for sex to happen, to hang out, to have fun, to hook up, not take shit so fucking personally and be a dude with a stick jammed up his ass. Relax, dude. Hang out, have fun, hook up. That's a simple formula. That's all you got to focus on. If a woman reaches out to you, assume she wants to see you, make the date. If you've been out with her several times and you want to progress things in the bedroom and she's texting you, she's already been to your house, assume she wants to see you, invite her over. Make a definite date with a definite date and a definite time and plans to come over. Like, hey, just like I said earlier, like I talked about in Seven Principles to Get an Expect, but your problem is, dude, is you got to stop being so angry and buttered and pissed off. Because you're basically communicating with her every time you interact with her that you're a fucking lunatic. And I'm sure you're probably a good guy. You're just impatient and you're frustrated. And the reason you're impatient and you're frustrated is because the strategy that you've been employing at 39 years old is fucked. It does not work. Remember, a woman has is going to submit to you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically with her body as long as she feels safe and comfortable. And every time she interacts with you, you're like, zzz, zzz. she gets shocked with ah, anger and hostility. But she's still reaching out to you, so that's a good thing. So he says, my question is, how much time do I give her to shape up or ship out? Also, I need to progress and get her to start kissing me. The idea, dude, like I talk about in the book, is when the signs are there, then you kiss her and then she'll be receptive to it. But it's obvious you don't know what to look for. But again, you've only known, you've been around for a week or so. But that's why I say read the book 10 to 15 times because you're right in the middle of something here that you can potentially turn around if you would just chill the fuck out, dude. I will say she has never said no to me. Well, despite the fact that it sounds like she's turned you down for a number of dates. I don't understand her behavior. She made it clear she's not seeing anyone else or anything. Can be? Can she be confused, unsure, or not ready? You just keep fucking it up. I mean, uh, it's your fault. This girl liked you, and you're talking her out of liking you by just... Like you're constantly shooting emotional barbs at her that make her... Relax. Be happy that she reached out to you. Hey, it's great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. Why don't you grab some wine? Come on over. Hey, why don't you grab some White Claws and grab a six-pack of White Claws and come on over. Grab some fucking Miller Lights and come on over. Grab some espresso. I got a new espresso maker. and Come on over. Grab some steaks and some shrimp and some veggies and we'll grill out. It'll be awesome. Hang out. Have fun. Hook up. Forget about the relationship. Forget, forget about how it's progressed. If you read the book, the information is in there on what you should and shouldn't be doing to progress things. It's like, it's, I mean, she's making herself available to you, so you still got a chance. So make the date. So if you have a situation that you would like my help with, quickest way is to book a coaching session with yours truly. Go to my website, understandingrelationships.com and book whatever coaching option works for you. And again, you can also read... 3% Man and Mastering Yourself, the digital ebook version for free on my website. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. And until next time, I will talk to you soon. <laughs>